All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call to order the regular meeting of the City Council for February 1st, 2021. Uh, just a reminder that we are still under Ordinance 1000. Um, <clears throat> if everyone could please turn down their laptops, primarily me, there we go. Um, we are still under Ordinance 1000. I see Council Member Mosley and Saunders are both uh, present uh, virtually. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and lead us in uh, invocation and pledge of allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this opportunity to come together and serve our community. We come to you this evening seeking wisdom and discernment as we go about the people's business. We ask that you be with us and, and the people during these uncertain times and that you look after those that look after us, our police officers, firefighters, medics, nurses, doctors, men and women in uniform serving overseas and so many more. We pray that your hand will protect them and be with us this evening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. My pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Outstanding. Uh, we have a long agenda, so uh, I'm going to get right into it. Um, we do not have any special guests and announcements, but y'all should have received uh, um, uh, the minutes for the January 19th meeting. Uh, if there's no discussion on that, I'd entertain a motion to adopt the minutes. So moved. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed? Yes. Please say no. Motion carries. Uh, I have one public comment card. It's on an agenda item, so we will get to that uh, when that time comes. We will move right on to the financial statement review. Ms. Mathis. Good evening. Let's see if I can get plugged in here. Uh, no? You want me to just do it off the report? Yeah, if you could do it off the report. Okay, we can do it that way. That's not a problem. So, if you will turn with me then to page four of your financial report. <laughs> we are looking at the preliminary December 31st, 2020 financials. Um, I say preliminary because I feel confident we still have some work to do to reconcile these, to, to get them um, finalized for audit, as we still actually do for 19 as well. So um, we have been working on uh, just kind of a general year closeout, um, getting payroll taxes and all of that stuff wrapped up for the year. And of course, starting a new fiscal year in our system, um, which is the case every January. And, um, and, and so as soon as we kind of get past this hurdle um, of January and finishing that up tonight, um, we'll be back into nose to the grindstone working on trying to get these audits caught up. That our our big priority coming up here. But taking a look at those uh, December financials, if you look at your county millage tax, we ended the uh, year about forty nine forty nine thousand dollars more than the previous year, seventy five thousand dollars behind budget. That's about where we were anticipating we would end up as we've been tracking uh, that revenue through the year. Our franchise fees ended up a little bit less than the previous year and a little bit behind budget. Um, and I think some of that's just due to um, the revenues of those uh, franchisees being affected this year. State turn back funds, we ended the year $33,000 behind budget and 16,000 less than the prior year. Uh, that was planned and we knew about that. We may end up getting some of that back in April, May and June of 2021. We did not budget to get it back. So if we do, it'll just be above and beyond what we're anticipating this spring. Our county sales tax, December's report represents those taxes collected for sales in October. Um, we're ahead of budget $73,000 and $168,000 more than the prior year. Similar story on our city sales tax, we're $35,000 ahead of the year budget and $212,000 ahead of the prior year. 
Um, and that also included all nine months of the $324,000 payback um, of that credit that was adjusted in April, I believe. Um, um, in a police and fire, we still show that being $207,000 ahead of budget in police and five hundred and seven dollars ahead of the prior year. We've been talking about that. We, we reclassified those 911 uh, dispatch revenues and the lot fee turn back so that they actually show as revenue and aren't offsetting expenses down on the other side. So you can see then the expenses are $421,000 ahead of the prior year. Um, and so you'll see that coming into 2021 as we start to look at a 2020-2021 comparison. That'll start to look a little smoother and it won't look so off year over year. Same thing in the fire department. Financial reports reflect being $13,000 ahead of budget year to date and $255,000 ahead of the prior year. And um, their expenses were $495,000 higher. So you can kind of see that offset there. Um, and there is a little note here. Their expenses are, would have been four hundred and ninety. They don't show four hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars higher. They would have been, uh, but we got a large credit back from the CARES Act for payroll um, that was recorded as a credit to expense because, based on the federal grant funds, that's how we had to record it. So, um, Parks and Rec Senior Wellness. Um, both we've been looking at that all year they they had took a pretty hard hit those are the two areas that took the hardest hit on our revenue due to covid um, they were closed for several months i'm not sure exactly how long but parks ended two hundred and two thousand dollars behind budget and fifty eight thousand dollars behind the prior year their expenses were under budget two hundred and ten thousand dollars though so they they cut back expenses enough to compensate for their revenue shortfalls and the same thing in seniors. They were end of the year $123,000 behind budget, $76,000 behind the prior year, but their expenses were $136,000 under budget. Looking at the expenditures in all departments, um, they remained under budget year to date. Um, you'll see a little bit of a variance in courts. That's actually something I need to clean up. That was um, something that should have come out of the court automation fund and it hit the general fund. So I've got a little bit of reclassing there. So they will actually end up under budget as well. Um, and then again, that we got that $644,000 reimbursement from the CARES Act um, in December that hit um, that, that public safety payroll. And this also reflects the um, reclassification that we did on resolution 2020-37 in December, which reclassified certain expenses in 2020 to the street fund. Um, that was a um, specific street related expense that had been being recorded in the general fund as well as the senior transportation program. Um, so those have all been moved as of the end of 2020 um, for the whole year. And then we budgeted in 2021 to, to spend those funds out of the street fund. So all of those changes have, have been made and are reflected in these reports. General fund balance has been adjusted for all those revenues recorded in the general fund over the last couple of years. And we did all of that reclassification. Um, we're still working on continuing to review all of that, as I said. Uh, but as of the end of the year, the fund balance is $55,000 above the required minimum. So I said we'd get right about, about back to zero and, and we made it back there, which is great. <laughs> uh, if you'll flip probably two pages to the street fund. Nope, three pages. There we go, page seven. In the street fund, you'll see your county millage tax was ahead of budget $12,000 and $19,000 ahead of the prior year. And the state turn back funds were $38,000 ahead of budget and $58,000 ahead of the prior year. Um, they did not um, hold back our turn back funds for streets, just our general turn back funds. And both the personnel and operating expenses remain under budget for the year, um, even after we did all those reclassifications and, and moved stuff around. Everybody was under budget in streets as well. Uh, currently available street fund balance at the end of, that should say December, it said November in my report, um, was $4,194,822. Sanitation fund, which would be on page nine. They're $77,000 behind budget on revenues, but 
dollars. That's not thousand dollars. That is actually dollars. There's not a there's not a, a thousand missing in my report uh, more than the prior year's receipts. So um, pretty much right in line with last year. Their operating expenses are thirty five thousand dollars under budget and fourteen thousand dollars less than the prior year. And their personnel expenses were $177,000 under budget and 101 more than the previous year. Um, and I have a feeling that's largely due to job openings, um, positions they were unable to hold and keep filled, um, that they're desperately looking for great people to work with. <laughs> um, so on your police and fire fund, the FEMA grant fund and the COVID relief fund, um, there, you'll kind of see the, the the police and fire fund, of course, we're moving money every month, so it's going to maintain a zero balance. We're budgeted to do the same thing in 2021, so you'll see that pretty much come in and out every month. Um, that FEMA grant, we have moved all of the matching funds that the city's going to have to put towards that grant into that fund, and so over the next year, they'll be able to expend out of that and apply for reimbursements within that fund without us having to come back and hit the general fund again. Um, and then that COVID relief fund, you can see it went down to, to zero. Um, we have pretty much closed out that grant and that is done. Um, the only other fund that was in there was the capital um, report. And I didn't get to go into a lot of detail on it because we put money into the capital improvement fund at the beginning of last year. Um, and we didn't, we just kind of left it there all year long. Now, 2021, with this budget, you're going to start seeing that money move back into the general fund for um, items that were appropriated through the 2021 budget. So that's all I have. Thank you. Is there any uh, questions, comments, discussion? Councilmember Mazzoni. Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to say excellent job any of this year. Um, it wasn't for your work getting, moving that money, identifying the money that should be street, moving that over, and all that work getting the, the CARES grant, which working with government grants I know is not easy. We would have ended up highly negative and would not have been able to achieve our budget. So I know that was a lot of work. Uh, definitely appreciate everything you've done there. Um, I have a few questions. Okay. Um, shouldn't be too fast. If you don't know them, that's fine, because um, they may be a little bit in the weeds so we can get back. Um, Part of the police vehicles, mm -hmm. since that's a lease, did we pay all that up front, or is that a little bit every five years? T Tina, do you know the answer on that, what that lease agreement is? It's not paid in total, it's spaced out. Okay, okay. so it's spaced out. In the, yeah. in so the, the amount you're seeing for leased vehicles is the annual cost so as of the leased vehicles, and we're under a five-year uh, lease cycle per vehicle. And are we adding vehicles each five years Correct. as we roll it, into well, that program? Yes, assuming okay. the council continues to appropriate funds okay. for that. That'd be the only thing. It's what we're budgeted to do for this year, though. Yes. Yeah. Um, also, we made a lot of um, the all the the three hundred thousand dollars in capital equipment from there was kind of the end of the year. And also, I know we haven't received some of those. So, have has that money hit the books reflected on this, or is that still encumbered? It's encumbered, there. so it's on your balance sheet as okay, so as, as being encumbered for the year. So it's included in your fund balance already, okay. um, or your available fund balance. It's already kind of in that. Um, it will actually um, roll into 2021. The appropriation will roll into 2021 um, so that we can close out these POs and spend it when, like, the sanitation mm -hmm. truck that's been on order for a long time when it finally arrives and in. things like that. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to accept the December financials. So moved. Mayor, do we need to wait since she said there may be some adjustments made? Not to the December financials, right? I thought I heard that some numbers may be moved around, so I wanted but to that's, clarify. But that's typical throughout every month. The numbers that we get each month, that they'll change in subsequent months. But I'm assuming the yeah. December financials are not changing. You can accept this as a preliminary okay. report. There may be some work we do through audit to, to it, it would mostly be moving from one period to another or something like that. It shouldn't affect the fund balance. Okay. Thank you. But I did hear a motion to accept, and I hear a second. 
I hear a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Going once, twice. Sold. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. All right. I asked um, Chief Ezell uh, if he wouldn't mind postponing his department report just because we have a pretty crowded uh, council meeting. So he will be prepared at the uh, next meeting. Um, and he was prepared this evening, too. Uh, next up is the Planning Commission report, which would be Council Member Gardner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this last week, there were only two items on the agenda. Uh, th that was the rezoning and the land use change uh, for the old Central Arkansas water plant. Um, I would encourage you all to go and view the YouTube video um, on the city's website. Uh, there was a really good discussion about this whole process, um, and there was, there was a lot of good back and forth between the commissioners, so I would encourage you all to do that. Uh, but for these two items, uh, staff had recommended a due pass recommendation to the city council and the planning commission uh, unanimously approved a due pass recommendation to the city council for uh, both the land use change as well as the, uh, the rezoning request. So, but I would encourage y'all to go take a look at that video and uh, just listen into the comments and the questions that they had. They did a really good job asking a lot of good questions about it and, and discussing it. So. Uh, then the last thing was uh, Mr. Todd has been serving on the Planning Commission for, uh, we'll just say one plus year, um, and more, than, more than one year, and uh, he concluded his uh, tour of duty, and I know I, I appreciate his service, as we all do, so uh, this was his last meeting last Thursday, so thank you, sir. I think it was only his last meeting while on the board. I, I imagine he'll show up occasionally. Who knows? <laughs> He's free to choose what he wants. Thank you, Council Member Gardner. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to have all ordinances and resolutions read by title only. So moved. Second. I've got a motion and second. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Motion carries. We will move on to unfinished business. The first item is the... Third reading of Ordinance 1020, amending the Monmouth City Code. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Monmouth, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1020, an ordinance amending Section 70-75 of the Monmouth City Code, to permit the Director of Planning and Permits to review and approve minor subdivision and lot splits and for other purposes. Thank you. This is uh, on third reading, so it's been read at the previous two council meetings. Also, this, um, uh, Council Member Gardner? I was going to give you a motion to approve Ordinance 1020. Sweet. I've got a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Mosley? Yes. Council Member Saunders? Yes. Council Member Mazzoni? Yes. Council Member Gartner? Yes. Council Member Williams? Yes. Council Member Tierney? Yes. Council Member Shin? Yes. Council Member Holt? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Ordinance 1020 is adopted. With that, we will move on to the second reading of Ordinance 1021, amending the Monmouth City Code. Madam City Clerk, Treasurer, if you could please read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumel, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1021 and Ordinance Amending Sections of the Maumel City Code to reduce the number of copies of preliminary and final plats required for submission and for other purposes. Outstanding. So this is on second reading. It was on first reading at the last meeting. It'll be on third reading at the next meeting if there's not any discussion. Seeing none, it'll be on third reading at the next meeting. Next item of business is the is new business. It's resolution 2021-3, approving Metro Little Rock Alliance contract. Madam City Clerk Treasurer, if you could please read that by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumel, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas. A resolution to be entitled resolution number 2021-3 
approving an economic development service contract between the City of Maumelle and Metro Little Rock Alliance. Outstanding. We have uh, with uh, MLRA Executive Vice President James Reddish, who's here to talk a little bit about uh, um, what MLRA has been up to and some of their plans. All right. Good evening, everyone. Mayor Norris, members of the council, it's an honor to be with you all tonight. My name is James Reddish. I'm Executive Vice President at the Little Rock Regional Chamber of Commerce. And um, on behalf of MLRA, I wanted to come tonight as you all consider um, this year's commitment to the group. Uh, to tell you a little bit about MLRA, I know there's a few new members of the council. Um, so to give you a little bit of background about MLRA and then to answer any questions you might have. So uh, we can continue through. Uh, one more. So the Metro Little Rock Alliance is entering now almost as, or just over its 20th year. This is a consortium of the economic development efforts here in central Arkansas um, in the 12 county central Arkansas region, as you can see there. Um, and if you want to hit the next slide, you can see over that time um, that our collaboration and coordination as a region has resulted in some pretty outstanding results, um, over 17,000 new jobs. Um, just under $700 million in payroll, uh, new capital investment over $2.5 billion. Uh, the next slide. To give you a little bit of background, as I mentioned, it's the 12 county economic development area. Um, and this is a primarily lead generation focused group. Um, there is no staff. I'm here representing the Little Rock Regional Chamber as a, as a member of the group, but none of the dollars contributed to um, the MLRA work from any of the participating communities or their partners go towards staff. Um, these dollars are exclusively meant towards lead generation, which could mean advertising dollars, marketing. There's some databases that we subscribe to that are required for modern economic development practices. Um, and then as with some frequency, we make contact with site selectors. This is a small group of, of influencers around the country. Um, who work to help shepherd these projects from, from looking around the country to ultimate location in any community. From time to time, we will bring them to our community to let them see what we have to offer. Um, and then from time to time, we will go visit them where their offices are, as you can imagine, in major metropolitan areas um, and large cities across the country. Um, the board, oops, if you'll go back just one, one second, no problem. Um, the board of this group, it's governed by the economic development practitioners, um, and so we are very pleased to continue to work um, with your representative, Judy Keller, um, who has a seat on the advisory council in representing Maumel. Each, um, this is a, a Senate model, if you will, each paying member has an equal single vote on the group, um, and the group, as I mentioned, is self-governed. The Little Rock Regional Chamber contributes in kind. Um, uh, back office financing assistance as well as, as some staff to, you know, advance some of the various strategies um, that we've been working on. For 2020, we had 27 new prospect inquiries. As I mentioned, each inquiry that comes in is, is sent out to the group. Um, so if the Little Rock Regional Chamber receives something, it goes out to the entire MLRA organization um, for all of our partners to respond to, and then we will collect those responses package them up and send them through. We can also provide some additional research capabilities um, if need be. We had 54 prospect visits. As you can imagine, many of these were virtual, um, although we have had some in-person prospect visits, um, leading to nine completed projects here in the region. Um, based on our data available, this was the most successful economic development year um, that, that we've had actually in this region. So interestingly, in the midst of um, of what we've all seen from an economic standpoint. We had a fairly good economic development year. Um, historically, if you look back, 2008-2009, the economic development pipeline dried up about nine months ahead of the overall national uh, recession. We've seen no slowdown in our pipeline, which is not a, it's not a guarantee of a, national, a strong national economy, but it would suggest that, that the national economy um, remains strong. We were able to pivot and conduct three virtual site selection visits. So, um, so engaging with this site selection community, we were able to continue to do that. And then we focused on a digital marketing strategy. Actually, some of you may remember that uh, the last couple of years we've used a group out of New York, which is best in class in economic development um, and were necessary for certain things that we were doing up to this point. But we've switched to a local, um, a local firm, uh, Mangum Holcomb Team SI. 
um, who knows our community, who has a vested interest in the growth of our community and, and in the state of Arkansas. They are now pursuing a digital marketing strategy with us using the, the sort of state of the art um, practices to specifically target those site selectors and decision makers, those YouTube pre-roll ads that you got to click through. We're one of those annoying pre-roll ads, but not for you all, for the site selectors in New York and Boston and Chicago. So um, that's the kind of work that we're doing through MLRA. If you want to click to the next slide. As we look into 2021, really, I think as most organizations, we're looking at it sort of as two years. The, or the first half of the year will be largely what we saw in 2020, continuing those virtual site visits. Um, as well as doing some housekeeping, we've, we've always had a non-compete and a confidentiality agreement amongst the partners. Um, this is about growing the region. It's not about switching jobs from one side of the river to the other side of the river or one county line to another. Um, we are going to expand that digital media advertising campaign to start to target some business uh, decision makers as well in key industries to the region as well as hoping in the second half of the year to return to some targeted conferences and in-person site selection outreach. Um, we've held fall site selection or uh, site selector familiarization tours here in our community um, in two of the last three years. We hope to get back to that in 2021. And then again, just before I um, pause for any questions, um, we've uh, in economic development has become um, almost a single issue business these days, and it's about talent, it's about workforce. As, as those of you who are business owners know, um, if you can't get the talent to, to run your business, then all the incentives and the real estate and the infrastructure in the world doesn't matter. And so we continue to work at a regional level in support of local initiatives, one of which we've been able to, to really get some traction on over these last two years here in Pulaski County. It's a joint initiative of the five chambers of commerce in Pulaski County, Maumelle, North Little Rock, Little Rock, Jacksonville, and Sherwood, as well as the four public school districts, Pulaski County Special, Little Rock, North Little Rock, and Jacksonville, if you want to hit two slides forward. Um, the Academies of Central Arkansas, I hope you've, I hope you've heard of this, um, but it is an effort in partnership with the school districts and the business community to provide a more relevant learning experience to our students. Um, to provide students with the opportunity to be both college ready and career ready upon graduation and to not presuppose or pre-choose for any student, to provide them with equal opportunity and equal access to both of those options throughout their high school experience, utilizing a model which was developed in Nashville um, back in 2005 called Ford Next Generation Learning, which aligns the school day around some sort of thematic element. It could be an industry, it could be an occupation, it could be ROTC, it could be pre-college. But whatever it is, the students have an opportunity to experience their education throughout the day through the lens of whatever interests them. So imagine learning geometry and then going and making a 90 degree weld and then taking that weld to your chemistry class and testing the chemical integrity. We haven't changed any of the math or the science that you've learned, but all of a sudden now it makes a lot more sense because we can answer the question, when am I ever going to need to know this? The answer is next period, right? <laughs> so. This is a massive transformation. It sounds simple and, and can be broken down into a couple sentences, but it requires the high school transformation. So we've been working very closely with the districts and the high school leadership, including um, your principal here at Maumel High School, who I've had a chance to, to visit with um, quite frequently. You've got a great school and, and tremendous opportunity um, in the trades and construction, something that's, that's physically in the building but not alive right now, um, in some of the business and, and entrepreneurship and e-commerce. Um, through both the, the student school as well as the coffee shop. So there's a lot of opportunities. This work is ongoing. The first year of freshman seminar, which is that introduction undeclared year, if you will, um, took place this year. There are students at Maumelle High School this year learning freshman seminar. There are, in fact, freshmen in every high school that has freshmen in this county learning freshman seminar. Well, then roll into, they'll become 10th graders, they'll become 11th graders, they'll become 12th graders. Um, and ultimately, the vision is wall to wall, all 1,200, all 12,000 high school students in this county having the exact same opportunity and the exact same engagement in their, in their education. So this is something that, while not a pure MLRA initiative, is something that's critical to our ability to compete regionally um, as, a, as a community and and with other places around the country. So with that, I know you have a very crowded agenda, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions uh, for Mr. Reddish? No? I guess that's what happens with a very thorough uh, explanation. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Mr. Mayor, and thank you all for your consideration and your continued partnership. Thank you.
So with that, we'll move on to whether there's any discussion on resolution 2021-3 approving uh, the city's contract with MLRA. If not, I'd entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2021-3. So moved. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Motion carries. Thank you very much for coming out. I'm sure Ms. Keller will get me the contract here, probably as I walk out of the room to go back to my office after this meeting. Thank you. The next item of business is the first reading of Ordinance 1022, amending Chapter 10 of the Monumental City Code. Madam City Clerk Treasurer, if you could please read that by title only. Be it enacted an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maumel, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1022, an ordinance amending Chapter 10 of the Maumel City Code to revise enforcement procedures, eliminate the categories of potentially dangerous animal and hazardous animal, to change the current definition of dangerous animal, to remove the ban on certain breeds of dogs and for other purposes. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. First up, this is an uh, ordinance sponsored by Councilmember Gardner, so I'll ask him to introduce that. Immediately following his brief introduction, I've got a public comment card uh, from a uh, resident, and then we can move on to council discussion after that. Councilmember Gardner. Thank you, sir. Uh, just a, a few quick comments on this. Uh, you know, I, I ran a similar ordinance about a year and a half ago, and one of the things that I really wanted to come out of this uh, was making it easier for animal services to um, handle animals equally um, and, and not have any confusion over what to label an animal or, or how to, to deal with the public um, when they need to, to do something about an animal. So um, thanks to uh, Mr. Davis, uh, the supervisor for animal services, who uh, gave his input on this, as well as the city attorney who helped, uh, well, did all the, the, the legwork here to get all the, the things added in. But a couple of things that I wanted to point out that we kind of skipped over last time, and I wanted to make sure this is understood going forward. Um, while we are, in this particular ordinance, eliminating the phrase hazardous animal, which is a current category, and we're also eliminating potentially dangerous animal, I just want you all to know that all of the, the language that you see in those categories um, has been added to the remaining categories of animals. So just because you see something has like a, a particular situation may have been uh, removed, that has been reclassified and put somewhere else. So I wanted to make sure that that was, was understood. And so even if you may see it stricken on one page, um, it is typically, uh, it's been added back in under the remaining categories that's on there. Um, other than that, um, one of the things uh, that is actually already prevented in our city code is uh, chaining of animals. Um, so that's already prevented, but there is a new section added here uh, that allows uh, animal services to either issue a citation or a warning um, on the premises if they do notice that an animal has been chained. Um, so this gives them a little bit more authority to deal with it. And if that situation is not rectified, as you can, you know, if you, as you read through here in the coming weeks, um, they have five days to correct that violation um, before animal services could, could come back and, and do that. Um, one other one, uh, section five is an entirely new section, and this basically deals with animal mistreatment. And this gives animal services the ability to, to go in and, and work in situations where uh, an animal has been mistreated. Um, and that could be the, the conditions that the animal is living in. Um, it could go back to, to tethering or chaining of the animal, um, uh, the living conditions that it's in. So this gives the ability for animal services to work with that homeowner uh, on that situation. And if they need to remove the animal at some point, they would have the option to do that as well. Uh, and then, Lastly, um, this will end the uh, discrimination in Maumelle against dogs based on their appearance, um, simply put. So we won't uh, have animal control uh, going out and looking at dogs based on their breed or their appearance. Uh, and in turn, it's going to give animal control the ability to treat all dogs equally. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've got a public comment card from Eva Palmer. If you could please uh, come up, state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes, ma'am. 
Okay. Hi, my name is Eva Palmer. I live at 151 Pleasant Wood Drive. Um, I wanted to speak today in support of repealing breed specific legislation because it's a subject that's very important to me. I've done extensive research on this topic for my Girl Scout Goal to Work project, and I'd just like to share with you some of the facts that I've learned. I'd like to start off by saying that I understand that the intention of BSL is to protect the community against potentially dangerous animals. However, I have learned that BSL is not an effective solution and unfortunately does more harm than good. Firstly, BSL is difficult to enforce because of the difficulty of determining the breed of some dogs, especially mixed breeds. BSL is also discriminatory against responsible owners and their dogs. It punishes those who have well-trained banned dogs without holding owners of truly dangerous dogs accountable. Additionally, BSL imparts a false sense of security. Breed bans de-emphasize the importance of appropriate socialization and training because they imply that breed determines a dog's behavior, which is false. According to the CDC, factors that do affect a dog's behavior include heredity, sex, early experience, reproductive status, socialization, and training. Their research shows the following. An unneutered male dog is 2.6 times more likely to bite than a neutered dog. A chained or tethered dog is 2.8 times more likely to bite than a dog who is not chained or tethered. 97% of dogs involved in fatal dog attacks in 2006 were not spayed or neutered. 78% were maintained not as pets, but rather for guarding, image enhancement, fighting, or breeding. Finally, I would like to mention suggested alternatives to BSL. This includes enforcing non-breed specific dangerous dog laws with an emphasis on chronically irresponsible owners, enhanced enforcement of leash laws by trained animal control officers, increased availability of low cost sterilization services, laws prohibiting chaining, tethering, and unreasonable confinement, enhanced enforcement of animal cruelty and animal fighting laws, and finally school-based and adult education programs that teach pet selection strategies, pet care, and bite prevention. My research has shown that BSL is ineffective in preventing dangerous dogs in the community. I hope you will consider these facts, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for coming up and, and talking. It's never easy. I know I wouldn't have been brave enough to do it at your age, uh, and so it's always uh, exciting to see young people getting involved in petitioning their local government. Uh, with that, uh, I have up... Councilmember Tierney. Uh, yes, uh, Councilmember Gardner, I'd like to uh, ask you to discuss uh, one point uh, that was in the uh, ordinance last year when it failed that I really regretted seeing it not being enacted was uh, how the previous the way the laws were written was that if uh, someone broke into somebody's home and was attacked by the dog, they could sue the homeowner, where last year's ordinance was rewriting it to where they would not be held, you know, liable for any uh, damage done by an intruder. Is that uh, remaining in the new law as it is written now? I'm going to defer <laughs> to the city attorney. Uh, I don't know if animal services needs to weigh in on that. So your, your question is, is that, uh, you know, change it, is, did that change still take effect with this new law where last year we changed it to where a homeowner would not be liable for the dog attacking an intruder? Uh, well, that, you know, whereas it is right now, if somebody, you know, breaks into your home, your dog attacks them, they can sue you. Uh, well, the way the law was being rewritten last year, if somebody breaks into your house, then that's on the intruder. So um, if you will look on page five of the ordinance, and I'll, Madam City Attorney, if you need to correct me after I say yes. this, you know, there is a new uh, language here. Um, you'll see it after point three, and I'm going about halfway down in the paragraph. Uh, no animal shall be declared vicious or dangerous if the animal is protecting or defending a human being within the immediate vicinity of the animal uh, from an unjustified attack or assault, or if they're protecting their young. That answer your question? Right, yeah. I, I, I basically wanted to bring that up and have right. that uh, included in the conversation. Right, right. No, exactly. No, I believe that's my understanding, and I'll, I'll defer to the city attorney if she has other comments on that. Yeah, I know it's in that definition section. Um, it, I'm trying to recall if it, I, I remember reading it, you know, it's been a couple of weeks since we worked on this, so I'll, I'll keep looking for that section. Okay. <clears throat> to see if that's the only place that it re it's referred to or if we included that in somewhere else as well. I do know that, uh, just to give a little bit of background, um, I used the ordinance we had worked with last time. I also went and um, 
looked at Conway's animal control ordinance and took some provisions from it that I felt would strengthen uh, enforcement provisions. Uh -huh. um, so those are the are the major additions, but uh, for the most part, it is very similar to the one we considered last year. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Mazzoni. Yeah, my big question is, um, is this the right avenue in spacing to, to, to work on this? The reason I say that is there's a lot of fear out there. You say pit bull, people get scared. So I, I really applaud you going out and getting some facts getting out there. But there's a large part of the population here, pit bull, they get scared, worried that there's one going. So are we rushing this? Can't we have a get a working group together, get some out to people so we get more, more buy-in from the community? Because I, all last year I heard a lot more about this pit bull ban, especially as it got politicized towards in the campaign than anything else. I think we missed a great opportunity by not getting that on the ballot last year and having the people actually come out with their, with their opinion. That having said, we, as, as representatives, as we represent the people of Maumelle, we have to do two things. One, we have to maximize the liberty, liberty to own what animal they want. On the flip side, there, there are reasons that people are scared, and we also need to make sure that those fears are alleviated, because there is, there is a fear of a large animal and a pit bull. So I just don't want us to rush this through. So that's, that's my comment on this. Thank you, sir. Council Member Gardner. I was going to just redirect back to what Council Member Tierney was asking. Um, there's also a section on page seven um, uh, about if uh, an animal, well, there's, there's a paragraph there, um, that no animal shall be declared vicious uh, or dangerous if the person attacked was teasing, tormenting, abusing, uh, or, or someone was committing or attempting to commit a crime. So there's a section in, in multiple places about that. Councilmember Gardner, there's one more, and I think it's the one he's looking for on page 12 in uh, section 10 that says, no animal shall be declared vicious or dangerous if the person attacked was in the process of committing a crime. I think that's the one he was looking yep. for. It is, yeah, it's still there. That states it pretty plainly right there. <laughs> Council Member Mosley. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, appreciate it. I, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, mention a few things here, and I wanted to first uh, uh, say that uh, Council Member Mazzoni had a really good point there. Uh, I don't think there's a big buy-in by the uh, residents here in Maumel uh, to lift the ban on pit bulls. I, I, think, uh, I think there is a lot of fear. Uh, I, I walked to uh, at least a thousand houses during the campaign, and uh, when people would ask what uh, maybe some differences were between myself and my opponent, the subject of pit bulls came up. And I did not find anybody uh, enthusiastic about lifting the ban. It ranged basically from people saying, well, I really don't care, I guess, and uh, to others that, that were horrified by the idea of, of uh, doing that. Uh, I think they view it, and I view it also, as making Maumelle less safe. Uh, Mom Hill has a reputation for probably being one of the safest communities, if not the safest, in central Arkansas. And I think I think if we uh, we back off on this, we're we're signaling that uh, that we're not as safe as we used to be. Uh, uh, little kids aren't maybe as safe walking neighborhoods. Uh, little pet dogs at the lake may not be as safe. Um, I've uh, I've really been attuned to pet bulls and the and the subject the last ever since it came up this last time. And uh, uh, I've, I've noticed uh, like one time I went to uh, Two Rivers Park and I got out of the car and I surprised a pit bull that somebody was gonna be walking there, snarled and lunged at me. Uh, fortunately, the woman handler had a good grip on her leash. Uh, I just, I just uh, am not, I'm not, I'm certainly, a, I'm a very much a no vote on this ordinance. Uh, Perhaps some of those other things have been added, but I, I cannot lift the breed ban. I don't think the residents of Maumelle want it lifted. I, I think we should hold off on doing anything like that until we've perhaps had a referendum, as Mr. Mazzoni, I think, was referring to. Put that on the ballot. 
negative question uh, because I, I guarantee, or I, I won't guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that 70%, uh, it'll be, it'd be a 70 to 30 against lifting the ban. Uh, we've got, you know, most of us out here don't know the difference because we never, we never, uh, we, we didn't live here when there wasn't a ban. I, I actually uh, visited with a couple of old timers the last few months uh, about what they knew about this, this ban. I uh, visited with a gentleman today who recollect, he, he uh, vividly recollected uh, the, the council or the city board at the time putting that ban on. Uh, he said that according to his memory, a lady was killed over in uh, Southwest Little Rock by a band of pit bulldogs and a number of communities immediately moved to go ahead and put a ban on. He felt it was uh, best for Mom Mill. Uh, I think this, another old timer told me that this was, uh, our, our current ordinance was, uh, uh, we were sued over it and ended up in the state Supreme Court, but it held up under the state Supreme Court. They, they came down on the side of our ordinance. So a lot of work was gone, put in to, to get this ordinance in place and keep it in place. And I, I don't think we should jump the gun and make Maumel less safe without making sure that our residents want it that way. Um, I'll go ahead and yield for now. I've probably got a couple more things to say. Thank you, Council Member Mosley. Council Member Shin. Uh, I too went through my ward, went to at least a thousand houses. And I have to say the response that I received mainly because of the issues that were brought up in your ward, my result was totally the opposite. Uh, more people that actually brought this up to me want to see it changed. They want to see it lifted. So, you know, personally, I, I would prefer to see it go before the people. But I'm not afraid to address this either. And I, I have to disagree with you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Council Member Mazzoni. Yeah, go back to you. Yeah, I'm not suggesting a referendum because the next one's two years away. I just want to make sure that that, that we do this smartly. We have one, it, no matter what we're going to do here, we looked at it once before, it's coming up again. Like everything, there is, there is a, a sizable people who are against it on just because of the name. There's a lot of people that won't be ever convinced either way, and it's the same thing people for will always be convinced. But if we're going to do something, we need to do it smartly to look at it, to look through all the problems, look through other things and come back. It, I just don't, I feel this is a little rushed. And and there could be, and I'm not saying there wasn't a lot of work behind that. I'm, I'm not at all. But this is a highly emotional charged issue for this city. And I think we just want to make sure that, that, we, that we cover all the bases and come out with the best product to be voted on at the end. And part of that is to alleviate to alleviate people's fears if this does get passed. That's that's really what I'm saying, that we need to, to really get the word out, to to really, you, there's no way we can find the pulse of the people without, but at least give people a chance to talk, give, give the experts time to come in on both sides and give well thought out, you know, what, what the ground truth is, if, if that makes sense. Thank you, sir. Council Member Williams. Okay, uh, this was this has been two years in the making. It's not being rushed. This has been um, we've been talking about it for two years. It was part of a lot of people's campaign in the last election, and so uh, it's just a matter of research and, like you said, having experts come, which we have had uh, time and again. And also, as far as safety of our city goes, this ordinance actually gives animal control more uh, more enforcement uh, duties as far as um, enforcing, enforcing laws and keeping us safe. Uh, it gives animal control more uh, leeway in having uh, the uh, authority to enforce these, these laws, which uh, reading through this, and I, I compared it to the old one I, um, and saw the, the difference that it, this is so much, this is actually better than our old law as far as being a little bit more specific about how to enforce, how animal control can enforce these laws. 
Um, I appreciate it, uh, Madam City Attorney and um, Mr. Davis for the work that you put into this. Um, it does clear up some things that I think were questionable in the uh, a year and a half ago when those points were brought out. I don't. It, I don't feel it's being rushed. I feel like you know this is the way. Um, we're, we're, we are all, we are a safe community. We want to maintain our safety, but I don't feel like um, banning, uh, uh, repealing uh, the the pit bull ban or not just pit bulls, bulldogs. Um, I think that it puts the uh, responsibility back onto the dog owner and not just uh, discriminates against dogs in general or a breed of dog that we, we're afraid of. It puts it, the onus back onto the, the um, owner of the dog. So um, I'm all for moving forward with this. Um, I, I don't, like you said, I don't want to see it go to the ballot because it's two years away and there, of course, will never be a special election for something like this, or more like four. Because we had such a large turnout in the last election, it would be really hard to get everything that would be needed to get it on the ballot. So I encourage uh, people to come. This will come, be back up uh, in um, two weeks. We'll discuss it again. And uh, this is a very highly charged and emotional subject. I mean, people do come out for this and uh, they're not afraid to stand up and speak their mind for it. And I'm, I appreciate that. So we'll bring it back up in two weeks and then uh, vote on it two weeks after that. So um, it, I don't feel it's being rushed. I think it's, I think it's long overdue. It's, it's been two years in coming, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Gardner. Thank you. Councilmember Holt? The last time we went through this issue, one of the last ladies that spoke uh, testified that she had worked in animal... Uh, hospitals and uh, etc and worked with um, the, the breed uh, dogs um, uh, for many years um, and testified that she did not you know that there just was not an issue at all with the dogs so I said well actually you're right it may well not be the dogs it's actually a people business it it we're blaming it on the dogs and that's not fair um, I get things blamed on me, <laughs> it's not fair either, but it, um, it, it's a people business. You cannot tell me that there are people out there, especially in this very intricate time that we are in, that there are people that will try to use that innocent dog instead of a gun. They want it to be worn, uh, worn away people from their house. Uh, I have seen just a uh, the last couple of days on uh, uh, next door mall mail that that uh, this dog has escaped or this cat has escaped or whatever. And you know I have a 11 pound little small bratta as well. And and uh, to keep him under control is no easy matter. Um, he's a lover, not a fighter. But there are people who are just naturally afraid of dogs. Um, I have a neighbor that lives directly behind my fence who's terrified of him, and I have to hold the dog to make sure, you know. So anyway, all of that is just to say, uh, I think that we are talking about a dog, and we, we have a people issue, and so I think that that is an enlarging of the, of the subject. I'm not full of hate about anybody or anything. It's a practicality of, of how do we approach it, and Time is on our set on our side anyway, but thank goodness this is first reading and we have two more to go. So um, nothing's going to be settled tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I keep losing uh, Facebook Live here, so I've managed to restart it a couple times, and here we go. I think we're back, back live. All right. Um, if there is no additional discussion, this will be. I've got, I've got a couple more. Yes, sir. I had a couple more points I wanted to make. I know, I know, uh, the proponents of, of these uh, people wanting the dog, the the, the dog breed. Uh, they 
they equate this to you know discrimination. I, I heard Mr. Gardner mention that, and, and and also trying to blame the trying to shift the uh, uh, a uh, a way of shifting the blame to the owner, not the dog. The dog's innocent, so we need to let the dog here. I, I think both those arguments are, are not very good. I think it's something you're trying to apply to humans. Uh, dogs don't have equal rights. Uh, uh, dogs are born with certain innate abilities, like uh, uh, retrievers. They automatically retrieve things. Uh, Irish setters, they point at birds. Uh, pit bull dogs, they, they're, they're fighters and they, they tend to snap. Uh, so I don't think you can say, well, let's blame the owner. I, I don't think it, it's the dogs that do the biting. If the dogs aren't here, they're not gonna bite anybody. Uh, and I think that's it's just a very clear point. Um, dogs don't have constitutional rights, they're animals. But uh, yeah, as far as a referendum goes, I don't, you know, two years is a long time away. I think uh, probably in about a year, there's going to be some primaries uh, uh, for a, a state rep and that sort of thing. I think that you could put it on the ballot then. That's just a year away. So you don't have to wait two years to do that. But I, I think that's something that means, needs to be done or some kind of a poll put in a uh, CAW bill where people can express their opinions and mail them back and we can tally them up. Uh, I mean, if, if they come in wholesale wanting to lift the ban, you know, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to fight you that much. But uh, I think we need to have some input from the, the, the people on this to make sure. That's all I got for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Mosley. All right. Is there any additional discussion? <laughs> Councilmember Mo <laughs> Mazzoni. Yeah. Um just looking through and I, I was looking at Cabot too and there are some restrictions on because I, I think if we go from nothing you can't have them at all to by reading the draft one you can have a a pit bull who is not neutered in a front yard with an electric fence and that may be a stretch too far um, like Cabot has has restrictions it has to be fenced uh, it has to be sterilized has there been any thought to that to put in? Because as you said, the non-sterilized is 2.6 times. I think that's something that people would want to hear, that, you know, hey, this is a requirement if you have this breed. I mean, there's some in here I think is excessive, like you have to put a sticker on your window um, if you have a pit. I, I, I don't agree with that. But, but this is what the part I'm saying where if we do it, we need to look over everything. You know, um, we teach people crawl, walk, run. You know, it, it work. you can't go from nothing, zero to 60, to, to get there. Um, that's, it's stuff like that. Has that been looked at? Would you like to address that? Or do you? Sure. <laughs> um, we, I, we originally did talk about that a little bit last year. One of the enforcement issues with that kind of thing is the same thing that we face now in that it's hard to, when you say a pit bull, it's hard to designate this dog is a pit bull, that dog's not a pit bull, this dog's half pit bull, but it looks like a lab. This dog's really only about an eighth pit bull, but it looks like a pit bull. And so when you separate out, like sometimes there's a higher fee or sterilization requirement, and just the things that you're talking about. And that's true, and I'm not saying that we can, we can write it that way, and that, I'm, I'm okay with that too. But as far, I think we do need to talk to animal services and, and maybe even incorporate the police because they end up being brought into these situations too um, about how they feel about enforcement of that. Because whatever we put in place, my focus or my, my priority, I guess, I want our laws to be easy to enforce, clear to enforce, um, and, and easy to prove a case. Because it, you can have every law on the books but if you can't or don't enforce it, it might as well not be there. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Mazzoni. Yeah, last thing, and I'm agreeing on all that, and that's kind of just what I'm saying. We get all this look at it. Are there smart ways? Because yes, there are, there are pit bulls out here. I'm not saying that they all need to be banned. I'm just saying make sure we do this smartly because we don't want to turn, if this gets approved, you don't want to turn around and have 
something very bad happen within a few months. We have that that is all I'm saying on all this to look through and put it out. If that makes sense. Thank you, sir. If there's no additional discussion, this will be on second reading at the uh, next council meeting where I'm sure we'll get to discuss it some more. <laughs> also, for anyone watching at home, we uh, it looks like we disconnected from Facebook twice or three times during this. Uh, we will be posting on the city website tomorrow uh, a full link of this, this meeting so that you could uh, take a peek at everything, or on our city page. You can watch the whole thing in its entirety. Next up is uh, planning commission appointment. First of all, before we go any further, thank you to the individuals that applied and have uh, sat here through uh, the meeting thus far. Believe it or not, you guys are not at the end of the meeting. Uh, with that, what we typically do is interview the uh, five applicants. We can't, at, we, it's an open meeting, so we can't close the meeting, but we would ask if you're if you're one of the folks that have uh, applied for this position, if you go with Mr. Grummer in the back to the other room, then when we ask questions, the people that go last don't get the advantage of, of having heard those questions. It's not mandatory. We just request it. But the first person up will be, um, is it Jacques Pierini? Did I say it right? I had a little bit of uh, help back there from Mr. Grummer. Uh, um, um, you're you're free to come on up, sir. Mr. Pierini. <laughs> Am I saying it right? Yes. That's a little bit of a tongue twister for me. Jacques will be French and Pierini will be Italian, so tonight you get both French and Italian well, good. language lesson. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We have a uh, copy of your resume has been uh, included in the council packet. Okay. Um, but if you'd like to take a minute to just introduce yourself to the council, I'm sure they'd be happy to sure, learn more about you. Sure, my name is uh, Jacques Pierini. I've been in the city, living in the city with my family here for over 20 years. We watch the city growing uh, by leaps and bounds. We're really happy with that. We feel this community is quite a safe community for our children to grow and uh, continue to grow. I was involved in, as a, my basic training in civil engineering in my specialties in structural engineering. I was involved with the uh, commission, I think about 10 or 15 years ago. And uh, I could see quite a bit going on uh, where we could actually make a difference dealing with uh, the certain developers and uh, see how the city, which direction the city would go. Uh, also, I've seen some abuses of the ordinances before. <laughs> unfortunately, and uh, unfortunately at times I saw that the, the city took, was forced to take more responsibility than they should have, and the city, I've seen the city spending a lot of energy in trying to keep people going the right direction and apply the laws that were already established. So uh, in that position, being aware of the a lot of those uh, restrictions, not really restrictions, but guidelines, uh, I think it would be of help to the city uh, as a consultant, unpaid consultant, if you will. And uh, also it's a way for me to give back to this community and help out um, because that's the way I feel. If I can help out, then I will do. Well, thank you, sir. Is there any uh, questions? Uh, I've got I've got some questions. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, on uh, all of the candidates, I was going to if if I, I couldn't read it on the resume, I was going to ask them about their education. And uh, uh, but it looks like uh, I, I see your education. You've uh, you've taken courses here and uh, and gotten your degrees in uh, engineering here in the United States, uh, yes. in Memphis, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I've see, I can see that. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you: Do you uh, there's there's always the question of conflict of interest. Occasionally, some of the uh, 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 commissioners will have to recuse because they perhaps represent a certain developer that's uh, in question that is involved in a project that they're looking at. And uh, I was wanting to ask you: Do you have any 
conflicts of interest? Do you do business with uh, any of the development or construction industry that, that, that do things out here in Maumelle? So essentially my clients will be uh, architects and or general contractors. And they will typically hire a civil engineer who will make presentation to the city um, on any project and very far removed from that. My uh, support is typically to the architect in terms of providing the bones to the building they design. <laughs> so, um, but if there, if somewhere uh, someone has some uh, questions as to, well, you know, is Mr. Purini involved in this project? Um, I will just say, yeah, I'm, I'm a structural engineer on this part of the project. However, I have nothing to do with the civil part of it. But uh, I'll be happy to recuse myself and make it known that I have some affiliation with the project. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. The third question I would have had would have been uh, what motivated you to apply, but I, you've answered that already. So I, I appreciate your time. Just wanting to help just as you are. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Council Member Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thanks for applying, Mr. Perini, and, and I say to you, Chell, um, I have two questions, and in the interest of fairness and equity, even if I know the answer, I'm going to ask each of the applicants the same questions. Okay. My first question, and, and I don't do this to attack you. I do this so that we all have a feeling that you would be a comfortable fit in this position. That's okay. I can first, question, first question is, how many planning meetings have you attended? In the past uh, 10, 15 years, none. I've attended uh, all of them when I was uh, on the board. Okay. And the second question is, in your own words, can you give me a brief description of what you think that the planning commission's job is to do. The planning commission's job is to um, make sure that the developers complies to all the ordinances that the cities have put in place. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate there's no wrong answers. We're just I'm just trying to discover that Thank you know you. what you're getting into and, and we be comfortable with it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Perini. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Council Member Tierney. Uh, I'd like to say that our other council members have uh, done a very good job of asking some of the questions I was going to ask. So I just have one question for you. What do you feel is your strongest asset that you could bring to the commission? Well, my basic training is in civil engineering, so I can pretty much read all the plans and, and uh, also evaluate some of the calculations that civil engineer will produce in terms of uh, water disbursement. Also you know, reading the grading plans, and seeing what the utilities are, and, you know, the curb cuts are pretty important, I think. Uh, so reading the plans would be my, my forte there. Thank you. Being more aware about what the developer, about what the engineer of the developer is proposing, <laughs> Great, which you. could be sometimes different. So reading the plans and understanding the plans being aware of, of uh, everything that the city wants to see and stay in line with the city guidelines. Thank you, sir. Council Member Mazzoni. Yeah, just a little more. Hey, I guess so. Um, you were in the, you were in the city council or the planning commission before. Yes, sir. Um, and bulk of your work is a lot of structural engineering. What, um, not being a civil engineer myself or structural engineer, what, um, what is your expertise in structural engineering? Does that give you anything? Because you're CE2, but do you have anything special from the structural engineering that will bring um, benefiting the, the city count or the, the planning well, commission? Well, you know, let's just say that uh, after I graduated, I went to work pretty much for uh, a civil engineering firm, which was a Melberger firm at the time. I was a structural engineer there, but at the same time was able to participate in the project and the lay of the land, what was required. And that helps me design foundation for this project. Second uh, was with a certain time at uh, Garber and Garber Engineering. Learned a lot la there about um, highways and uh, bridge engineer engineering design. And again, in bridge design, you get together with the civil guys quite a bit. 
you understand what goes on there. Um, then uh, the Garber and Garber also, water treatment plants were a big deal there. So I worked with the civil engineer uh, to look at the lay of the land, what was there, what was not supposed to be there, and then create a structure to adapt to the site plans. Um, then after that, pretty much been a uh, structure engineering, you know, providing the bones to a building. You know, like the architect makes it look good, I make it stand up. The, the, you know, MEP engineer makes it breathe. But, um, and then point out some uh, uh, discrepancies perhaps in the uh, civil plans and saying, you know, you want this building this way, but the hill is really going down in the wrong, direc in the wrong direction or just interact with the civil guys. Well, thank you very much. Is there any additional questions? All right. You're free to have a seat in here, uh, okay. and you get the benefit of getting to hear everyone else's answers if you'd like to. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and just for the Council's uh, knowledge, the order that we're going in is the order that the um, applications and resumes were received. Next up is uh, Leisha Gillen. Good evening, Ms. Gillen. We do have a copy of your resume, uh, but if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to the council. I will have to say, you know, I've presented in front of council many, many times. It's an honor to be back here, but the first time I've got to present or actually come and speak in this new cha chamber, so it's really good job, Mayor. Alicia Gillen. I live at 68 Jasmine Cove. As you can see by my resume, I've been involved in this community uh, for 20 years. A former executive director of the Mama Area Chamber of Commerce. So my involvement regarding community and economic development has just been a part of my life. Um, in April of last year, I got this mask, make me sweat. In April of last year, I had an opportunity to take another position and left the chamber. Um, I'm still in business development and I work for a company in Conway, but I've missed my mouth. I've missed my engagement with our city council members, with the mayor and with the staff. So when this uh, seat became available, I knew it was something I needed to do. And I reached out to Mr. John Todd and kind of asked him if he was going to do this thing again because running against John Todd, <laughs> we know better than that. And when he assured me that that was the end of his uh, term, I, I put my resume in immediately. So I'll be willing to answer any questions. Thank okay, you. you want me to, ready for me to ask mine? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm asking everybody three questions if they... Uh, uh, weren't uh, evident on the resumes or whatever. The first uh, first item was uh, education. Uh, notice I, I didn't find anything on education on, on your resume. Could you share with us uh, 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 your schooling and, and uh, 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 that sort of thing? Absolutely. So over the years, I've had the opportunity to attend college and go back to college and go back to work and go back to college again. So I've never had uh, the chance to finalize that career, but it also has given me an opportunity to use that as a mentoring opportunity for the young people within our community. It was something that I'm interviewed on and asked about often, showing that the degree is not always the necessary means to be successful in today's economy. That sometimes being burdened with 40, 50, or $60,000 in college debt with no trade and no skill um, is not always the best suited for everybody. So over the years, while I've not finalized that one part of my career, uh, I'm sorry, my education, I have received certifications, uh, advancement, professional development. As a matter of fact, you'll see that I uh, recently, this past year, uh, completed my CDI training for Community Development Institute. And I'm very excited that I'm actually going to be sitting for my PCED exam this year. So um, with COVID, it kind of put some delays on what that timeline was for me. So by the end of this year, I will be PCED certified, which means a professional economic developer. Okay. Uh, second question I want to check. Uh, I'm asking everybody about conflicts of interest. Do you have any uh, 
can you uh, tell us any relationships, uh, uh, promotional things you've done with uh, uh, the development community, the construction industry, or anything like that that would uh, pose a conflict of interest? And if you have one, would you be willing to recuse? At this time, I have no conflicts of interest. Um, as you know, I have working and ongoing relationships with builders, developers, realtors, um, city council members, planning commission meeting. I mean, there's just about anybody that I've had a connection with over the past 20 years. But if at any time that I feel that is a conflict of interest that would give me a personal gain, I absolutely would recruit myself of that issue. Okay. Uh, the last question was, I was gonna ask you what motivated you to apply, but uh, I think you pretty much mentioned that. So I, I think all my questions are answered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Mosley. Council Member Saunders, you're up. Thank you, Mayor, um, and welcome, Ms. Gillen. I'm, I'm glad that you applied. Um, in the interest of fairness and equity, I'm asking the same two questions for each of each applicant. It's not to be mean. Um, the first one is, how many planning commissions have you attended in Maumelle? Like over the years, there is too many to count. Um, one of the wonderful things that I had the opportunity to do with the Chamber of Commerce is actually start our leadership program. And I will have to say having five people apply for this planning commission, I mean, when's the last time that's happened? So the civic engagement yeah. within our community, I'm just, I just applaud the other applicants and I'm so glad that I've got some really great competition tonight. So with that being said, we always have encouraged our residents to watch and go to planning commission meetings, um, city council meetings. Uh, with COVID, we've also learned how to uh, navigate our day-to-day -day very differently than we have in the past. So being able to utilize like the Facebook Live and then also going back and looking at those resources. So whether I've not physically been here over the past year because of the pandemic, uh, believe me, I've been watching what you guys are doing. Okay, thank you. My second question is just so that we all feel comfortable that you know what, what's going on in the planning commission, can you, in your own words, briefly describe what you would be doing as a planning commissioner? I think the most important role for the planning commission is really looking at the, the codes and the rules and the regulations that we currently have in place and being able to interpret those and then also express those to the builders and developers within the area. Because once those things pass off of the planning commission, they come to you. So we are your first stopgap to make sure that we are in compliance with all of our state and federal and local regulations. And then also making sure that as we are moving forward, that we're integral in the decision making and working with the planning department um, with any changes that they wanna make and then also help facilitating the communication back to the city government. Okay, very good. There's no right or wrong answers. but that No, that was one was the right one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks, Ken. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Mazzoni? You kind of hinted on it, but uh, how will your time in the Chamber of Commerce um, really benefit the Planning Commission? Oh, well, that was it. I, I got a little choked up for a moment. So um, it was really such a privilege to work with Jim Neary over the years. And uh, he and I had the opportunity to sit down almost on a weekly basis and talk about the things that were coming to our area, talking about with Judy Keller and the economic development that was, you know, coming to the area. And I know that Jim really wanted to work on restructuring um, some of the things that we have in our planning and zoning currently. Um, because when they were first written, um, they're very different than who we are today as a community. And the Momo Forward is also an indication of that. So he would want to streamline that. Uh, we now have an amazing opportunity with uh, Scott Rummer uh, to really realize that opportunity and, and to see what we can do with that. Council Member Tierney. Yes, uh, what do you feel is the strongest asset that you would bring to the commission? I will have to say, um, you know, I've looked at the resumes of, our, of the other five candidates and I've also looked at the existing planning commission. And while it is stacked with some very, very, uh, very good resumes and engineers and a lot of people who are already in that construction business and who are really honed in on, you know, the hammer and nail, so to, so to speak, um, and into the architectural drawings, I think we need a little bit of diversity on that to show maybe a different perspective. 
So with my background in community and economic development, I think I offer that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any additional questions? Thank you, Ms. Gillen. You are free to sit here and uh, listen to everyone else. Next up Thank will you, be Jade Moore. Hello, Miss Moore. Come on down. You're the next contestant. So the council's all uh, received a copy of your resume and, and uh, some material that was inside the council packet, but perhaps you could take a minute to introduce yourself and uh, yes. let everyone know what you're about. I'm Jade Moore. My husband and I have lived in Monel since 2015. We have four kiddos, eight, six, five, and two. Um, and we are super involved at our church, New Life Church. My husband and I are the pastors of the young adults community there. Um, and my family and I, we own four businesses in North Little Rock and Little Rock, resale businesses. And we've been doing that since 2010. Did that straight out of the Bible college that I went to. And I am now learning more about this city that I'm living in. Excited to be more involved and get to know what's going on in our city. So that's me. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, Council Member Mosley, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, yes ma'am. I'm asking everybody three questions here if they weren't evident on the on the resumes. The uh, first one was education. I think you've indicated that. It looks like, uh, looks like you're from North uh, Little Rock, uh, Sylvan Hills or whatever. Is that correct? Sure would. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, I wanted to, the uh, second question involved uh, conflicts of interest. Uh, from time to time, uh, planning commissioners uh, represent various entities in the construction business or the, or the uh, development business, uh, and they have to recuse because they, they, they've got a conflict of interest. Uh, uh, they, they shouldn't be, in other words, they shouldn't be ruling on something that they financial, have a financial interest in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was going to ask you, do you have any conflicts of interest? And if so, would you be willing to recuse at a, uh, at, at a uh, commission meeting? I do not have conflict of interest. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, you, you, uh, I, the other question was what motivated you to apply? And you kind of mentioned that, uh, if you would like to expound on that, go right ahead. Sure. Um, honestly, during this entire season of COVID and, um, our business Still was open, thankfully. All of them were still open, but we had a lot of downtime. It just ran a little bit different for about three months. And my family and I got really into being outside. And um, with having young kids, I'm very thankful for all of the trails and the amenities that Momo has to offer just being out of the house. Um, we started biking everywhere. Um, we live in Mono Valley Estates, and so the bike to Sonic is really pleasant, and it's fun, and my kids can actually bike it. And then we just started dreaming about what our city would look like if we had a Mall Mill Square. Um, it's definitely motivated by Bentonville Square. Also, I know that that is a different world for us, but that's what got us going, and I have, uh, whenever, I get on a, whenever I get on something, when I get a dream, I get pretty ambitious, and I want to go after it and start figuring it out, so I started calling the number on the sign, trying to figure out who owns it, and talked to Scott Grummer, knew that he was involved here, and um, honestly, I just feel like it's a little bit of ambition that got the best of me, and now I'm, I'm on it, like I'm ready for it. Uh, that's just kind of where I land, but... Um, that that's the motivation. I know that we are planted and rooted here in Maumelle, and I know that our family is going to grow up here. And I want my kids to be able to go down to a Maumelle Square and do and have and be. Um, it's really a beautiful experience that my brother lives in Bentonville. They live one street off of the Bentonville Square, and 
the attraction, the amenity, the family feel, the, the environment, all of it is absolutely amazing. I think the aesthetics of it would really win for our community. And it doesn't really matter the age or demographic. I think it's a win all around. So that's that's my motivation. And it's, it's my kids, it's my family, and it's where we're growing up. So I'm all in. Thank you very much, Mrs. Moore. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you for applying. Yes, sir. Council Member Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Well, welcome, Ms. Moore, and thank you for applying. Um, I'm asking each of the applicants the two same questions, and in the interest of fairness and equity, of course. My first question for you, and I'm not trying to be mean, my first question is, how many planning commission meetings have you attended in Maumelle? Zero. This is uh, the first meeting I've ever attended for the city of Maumelle. Okay. That's fair. Um, the second question is, can you describe in your own words and briefly what the planning commission does and or what you feel like you would be doing? Um, hmm. In my own words, I would say the Planning Commission works closely with Judy Keller in all of what she does, which is super important, but I also feel like it is a place where you get to bring ideas to the table and insert um, some objections, if you will, to what is being talked about or discussed, and it's just an opportunity to be a part and involved in what's happening in your city. Okay. Well, there's no right or wrong answers. We just want to feel comfortable that you know what you're getting into here. So, okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Moore, for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next up is Council Member Tierney. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you again for applying. And uh, what would you feel is uh, your best asset that you bring to the commission? I'm a really driven person, and I feel like that would be an asset. I know that there's a lot of things that people want to see in Maumel as far as the community that I'm involved in. And I do feel like I have a, a good ear to hear it and also have some influence in different areas that can help move us forward in the direction that we want to go. So ambition, that would be what it would be. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Council member Mazzoni. You kind of touched on this, um, talking about the Maumel Square, but um, how are your experiments, your experience starting up the children's orchard or your other businesses um, what will that bring to the planning commission? What advantages does that have? Of being a business owner? Yes. To the, well, my Atlanta going through 2020 and being a business owner, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> could write a book on it, I feel like. Not because I know anything, but all the things that I learned. Um, I, just being a business owner, a small business owner, it's so much different than an actual corporate funded entity. You know, it's, it's your heart and soul. I know that the employees that I have working for me, they put diapers on my kids' bottoms. And if I didn't have them, if I didn't have that community, then we would not be where we are today. We would not have been able to open one store after the other from 2010 to 2017. So I feel like the relationship side, the community side of it is a huge asset whenever you know the cost, and but you also know the cost and the benefit of the people that you get to work with. It's a huge advantage whenever you take the relationship over the business side of it, even the economic side of it at some point. And I know that we have a cool community here in, in Maumelle. There's a lot of people that I know, a lot of people that I definitely do not know, um, people that I'm related to that have a voice and an opinion all the time. Um, but I think just on the, the business side, bringing into it, sure, I know the, I know the dollar bill, I know the P&L and the balance sheet and what it needs to look like, but I also know what we could offer as a community that could actually bring the community more together and us building that relationship to where Maumelle is a desired place to be. And if it's just an experience, an aesthetic experience, not maybe not moving here, but some place that people actually want to go because of what it, what the look and feel is. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any additional questions for Ms. Moore? Well, thank you. You're free to have a seat and listen to uh, how well everyone following you does. Next up will be Roy Andrews.
Good evening, Roy Andrews, 3 Monarch Drive. Sounds like you've done this once or twice before, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Andrews. If you wouldn't mind, we've got a copy of your resume uh, in the council packet, but if you could uh, uh, tell us a little bit more about you. Uh, originally from Little Rock, uh, moved to Maumelle almost 19 years ago and uh, lived out here, raised uh, three boys. They have all graduated from the high school, I thought. Yes, I served on the planning commission before about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. thought I was going to be moving out of state, so I stepped off the board, let some local people step back on, and uh, COVID hit, life changes, and I'm back. Uh, officially never really left. Uh, came back and forth on the weekend. So uh, background, I'm a civil engineer, uh, done development out here in Maumelle, do development all over the state of Arkansas and surrounding states, do anything from like the Sonic, did some church expansion up to stuff at UAMS, big university stuff, uh, shopping centers. So backgrounds in development, um, several friends in construction and kind of love the industry. That's it in a nutshell. Thank you. Are there any questions? Council Member Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Well, thanks for applying or reapplying again, Mr. Andrews. Um, now, in the interest of fairness and equity, even though I know some of your answers, I know your answers, I'm going to ask you the same questions as everybody else. So um, my first question is, how many planning commission meetings have you attended in Maumel? Oh my gosh, I, I don't know. I, I really, um, short of being on the commission, um, yeah, I can't tell you. I mean, it's probably 30, 40, I don't know. Outside of sitting on the commission, I've probably attended a dozen or so um, when not been on the commission. Okay, uh, good answer. Um, my second question, and this is all in the interest of feeling comfortable that you know what it's about, even though you've been on planning commission, but I have to ask the same questions. Um, can you briefly, in your own words, describe what the planning commission does and or what you feel like you would be doing? Um, so what it is, is we have a great staff here at the city. Um, really loved working with Jim Nary and everything that he gave to the city all of his time. He made, he made our job on the planning commission very easy. Um, he would review all these city ordinances, review the guidelines and make sure the developers and engineers did their job as well as the architects bringing forth any proposed development to the planning commission to make sure it met all city ordinances and was within the really the the heart of what not just the city wants today but what the city has always wanted as far as development goes to make sure the guidelines are met so that comes before the planning commission we have a chance to review those ordinances and review the developments we get the plans uh, ahead of time, at least a week before the meeting. We get to review the plans. We get a big, thick book, uh, the blue book with all the city ordinance in it. And we get to refer to that, make sure that, yes, we agree as well. If there's any questions that come up, just like tonight, if the public has any comments or any concern over it, then it's up to us to um, either pass that along or deny that development. And a lot of times, um, most of what we do actually comes before y'all, uh, city council. But it's um, kind of a due diligence to make sure the city staff has done their job in um, reviewing and reading the ordinances. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Andrew. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Next up is Council Member Tierney. Yes, uh, thank you for applying. Uh, what do you feel is the best asset that you would bring to the uh, commission? Probably the asset that I have is just my background with development and understanding, being able to read the plans 
and understand how the city ordinances actually apply. Um, like I said, the staff really does a great job in pointing all that out. Uh, when we have our informal meeting in the blue room, we get a chance to ask those questions and understand a little more. But I understand what the engineers are really trying to portray in the plans. And so, yeah, I, I can read the contours. I can read all the dimensions and everything. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Mazzoni? Are there any lessons learned you'd pick from your time prior on the, on the Planning Commission now that you've been away um, to have other experiences coming back that you think will benefit the Planning Commission? Um, lessons learned. I, I will tell you <laughs> it's very simple here. Um, after working in Nashville and Memphis and um, even some places down in Texas, uh, really I have an appreciation for our staff and, and our ordinances. It, and though our ordinances may seem simple, uh, in effect they are, but they're very straightforward. Um, and it, it's just, it's more of an appreciation of, of what we want and how we want it. Um, so I, I, yeah, I don't know, just experiences to see how other people do it. No, Thank you. Thank you. Is there any additional questions for Mr. Andrews? I've, I've got a couple. This is Mosley. Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah, I think I got skipped in the rotation. I did. So I'm, my bad. I jumped right to I'm, it. I'm coming in at the end here. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, I had three uh, three questions I was asking everybody. Uh, your your education was one, and uh, that's pretty self evident on your resume. There uh, looks like you've got uh, civil engineering uh, uh, and, and quite a quite a few things here, and and an MBA. Uh, let's see. I also wanted to raise the question of conflict of interest. Uh, as you know, occasionally uh, the members of the planning commission. Uh, uh, do work for some of the developers and the builders and people like that that are in construction industries that are that, that do business out here. I wanted to ask you if you had have any current conflicts of interest you'd like to reveal, or or would if they come up, would you be willing to uh, uh, recuse yourself? Uh, currently, yes, I would. Currently, I don't have any conflicts um, for developments going on out here. Uh, previous project when Sonic. The new Sonic uh, had come through several years ago. I was the engineer record on that site and had to recuse myself from that uh, development. And there's been a couple of others um, that I've been involved with and I've just had to step aside. Okay. Uh, another question. I, I know when you were, when you had to, you went ahead and stepped down from the commission there, you were, there was a, a lot of travel or something that you couldn't be here on Thursday nights and that sort of thing. Has that changed permanently or, or is that still something that could come back after the COVID? No, that has, that has changed permanently. At that time, I was actually living Sunday through Friday in Nashville, Tennessee, and I have since moved back uh, to my house here. And so, no, that's not an issue anymore. Okay. All right. Uh, that's about all I got. I, I'd asked everybody what motivated them. I, uh, if you want to expound on that uh, to motivate you to be on the planning commission, please please uh, let us know if you have something to share with us. I think just like all the people here tonight, uh, we want a chance to serve our community. And this is a great way to uh, give our influence and our background and experience and to help out the city. Okay, that's all I've got. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Mr. Andrews. You're welcome to have a seat. Next up will be Mr. John Latch. Mr. Latch, come on down. We've received a copy of your uh, uh, resume here in the council packet, and everyone's had a chance to look at that, but perhaps you could take a minute and just introduce yourself to everyone. Yeah, sure, not a problem. So, uh, like I said, my name is John Latch. I was born and raised in Little Rock. Um, 
I graduated from Arkansas Tech University with a degree in park, uh, Recreation and Parks Administration. Uh, from there, I started working for Arkansas State Parks and uh, moved out to uh, Marianne, Arkansas, was the assistant superintendent of Mississippi River State Park over in Lee County. Um, and then I've been promoted uh, since then to the assistant stadium manager at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. Um, the first time I stepped foot in Maumelle was when I was in high school. I was on a date with a, with a girl at Lake Willstein uh, Park here, and we went on a fishing trip. And uh, fast forward 12 years later, that that girl is my wife, um, and we live in Maumel, and about a block from where she was raised, her parents' house, and uh, within walking distance to Lake Willstein. So uh, don't really know much about planning or anything like that, but uh, I do know a little bit about parks and recreation, um, and I am very passionate about Maumel being a new resident, and uh, I have a daughter, a uh, two-year-old daughter, and another one on the way in April. So plan on spending a lot of time on the and very passionate about the city. Well, thank you very much. I think we uh, have some questions, and I will not skip Council Member Mosley this time. <laughs> so you are up. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, Mr. Leitch. I appreciate you, you putting your name in. I appreciate your interest in the community. Yes, sir. Uh, there's... Uh, 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 always, there's always something going on as far as parks and recreation around here. So I'm, I'm sure no matter what happens, uh, uh, we'd love your input at some point or involvement. Uh, also, I mainly wanted to uh, ask three questions. One was about education, but you pretty much went over that. So I'm not gonna ask that one. Uh, a standard question I've been asking people is uh, conflicts of interest. Uh, uh, occasionally, a uh, planning commissioner will be doing business with a uh, developer or, or a builder or somebody that's in an area that's uh, got, that we're uh, examining as far as the planning commission, maybe to approve a neighborhood or something, and and they will need to they would have a conflict of interest because they're doing business with them, and they would need to recuse. And I just wanted to ask you if you had any conflicts of interest at all right now uh, in that regard, or uh, if you, if you do, would you be interested in recusing at such time as that matter would come up? Uh, no, sir, I don't have any conflicts of interest. I work for uh, state government for, uh, you know, for state parks. Uh, you know, my only interest or, or conflict of interest, I guess, would be to the parks and, and recreation itself. So that, that's kind of my focus. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I've uh, been asking people, too, if they wanted to share any more on what motivated them to apply, but you, you kind of mentioned that, but uh, if you wanted to add to that, uh, feel free to go ahead. Uh, no, sir. Okay. All right. That's all I've got. Thank you very much. Council Member Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Lanch, thank you for applying for this position. Um, now, in the interest of fairness and equity, I ask the same questions to each of the applicants. So I'm not trying to be mean. I think we want to be comfortable that you know what you're getting into and that we're comfortable that you can do that. And uh, the first question is, how many planning commission meetings have you attended in Mall Mill? I have not attended any. I've uh, watched the videos online uh, recently when I saw the position was available. I've probably watched, I would say, f five meetings uh, altogether, but not the entirety of the meetings. Okay, that's fair. Um, and like I tell everybody, this is there's no right or wrong answers. So the second question is... Can you briefly and in your own words describe what you think the Planning Commission does and or what you would be doing on the Planning Commission? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, from, from what I can understand and, and, and what I've seen uh, from these meetings is, you know, planning and zoning for uh, whether it be residential or commercial properties um, and just the, I think... What is 
most key for this uh, position is the best interest for the city of Maumelle and the residents uh, that live here. Okay, thank you. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answers, but I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Tierney. Yes, thanks for replying. Uh, what do you feel is the best asset that you would bring to the commission? I think uh, my background in, in parks, uh, working for state parks, and then also, uh, you know, with my degree in recreation and parks uh, management. Thank you. And my, my passion for the, for Maumel. Thank you. Council Member Mazzoni. Yeah, you mentioned, you already mentioned Lake Willistine. Um, so people in Mel love, love nature, love our trails. Um, we're tree city. Um, so of all of them, what, how will your experience from the state parks and different, what will you bring to the, what will, what will that bring to the party for the planning commission? Uh, you know, I'm not real familiar with the, with the current uh, people who are on the commission. Um, but I do know that, that, you know, it might be a different background than, than possibly what they're used to. Um, um, I, I know it's kind of, might be kind of an odd fit, uh, but I do, I, I do think that the trails for Maumel, uh, and the park system is very key for, uh, the city that when you speak to a lot of people, that is one of the big reasons why they love Maumel so much. It's the reason why I love it, uh, so much as well. And I, I think making sure, uh, parks, trails are at the forefront of the future, uh, Maumel is very important and to keep residents, you know, moving in. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any additional uh, questions for Mr. Latch? If not, thank you, Mr. Latch. You may have a seat. Thank you, guys. Uh, what we have done is um, uh, everyone should have received a copy of the ballot. Those of you that are here present, uh, if you could vote for one and only one person and send it up here. Uh, and then once we receive all those in, we'll do a voice vote for Council Member Saunders and Council Member Mosley once we've received that. <clears throat> While uh, we're counting the, or do we have them all? Yes, legible signatures. These are um, these are uh, a matter of public record. We typically just don't read them out loud in hopes of not hurting anyone's feelings. While they're filling those out, I just want to thank all uh, the folks who have sat through almost two hours of meetings now to volunteer your time. Uh, we have five great applicants. It always makes it difficult to choose. Uh, to the four of you who don't get it, please don't be strangers. Come back. We have a lot of uh, city boards, uh, commissions, committees that we'd love to put you to use as well as just uh, continue, please, to remain active in the community. Uh, I'll go ahead and take a voice vote from Council Member Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Alicia Gillen. And Council Member Mosley. Uh, Mr. Pierney. Thank you. All right. Uh, as is often the case, we have a tie, 3-3, three, three, with the two uh, individuals uh, that are tied being uh, Alicia Gillen and Roy Andrews. So we will, uh, you will get a second ballot. Uh, the choices are between Alicia Gillen and Roy Andrews. To the three who didn't do it, please don't be disappointed. Uh, I, there's a lot of uh, uh, exciting folks here wanting to get involved, and we'd love to find ways for you to get involved. So please don't be a stranger.
Oh, uh, we'll do a voice vote starting with Council Member Mosley. Uh, yes, Mr. Andrews. Council Member Saunders. Thank you, Mayor. Again, Alicia Gillen. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Andrews. Uh, you have won by five to three. Um, uh, so thank you very much. We'll put you to work. I'm sure you know what to do to everyone else. Again, thank you very much for coming out and applying. With that, we will move on to the first and hopefully only reading of Resolution 2021-4, Nepotism in Hiring Practices. Madam City Clerk Treasurer, if you could please read that um, by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumelle, Pulaski County, Arkansas, resolution number 2021-4, a resolution restricting nepotism and hiring practices and repealing resolutions 89 through 27, 2012-13, and 2021-1. Thank you. So we saw a similar uh, resolution uh, last month. After we passed that resolution updating the old 1989 resolution, uh, it came to be known that there was a subsequent resolution passed in 2012 that specifically exempted um, uh, that the nepotism prohibition for any um, immediate family member uh, that is both part-time and seasonal. So if there's a seasonal and part-time uh, job, they can work for um, an immediate family member. The only, the, the only positions that jump immediately to mind uh, that I can think of are lifeguards uh, for the city. So we, we didn't want to remove that provision, ran it back through, and here we are. Um, is there any discussion on Resolution 2021-4? Councilmember Gardner? Motion to adopt 2021-4. We have a motion and a second to adopt 2021-4. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Motion carries. That concludes, that concludes new business. Uh, we will move on to mayor's comments. Uh, just a quick heads up. The Crystal Hill uh, Road Improvement Project is moving along. Uh, we expect uh, later on this week for a closing of one of the lanes, the northbound or westbound lane um, on uh, Crystal Hill in between Counts Massey and Crystal Bay. We will uh, be getting some information out on social media to let people know that, uh, that there will be a detour around there, but it's completely closed off. For those that haven't been down there uh, in a while, I recommend you do so. It looks a little bit like a war zone, um, but the end result will hopefully be a nice, beautiful road going through there. Um, do you have any council member comments? Council member Gardner. I just wanted to let you all know, um, today we received a notification from a... Uh, grant that uh, we had applied for for the splash pad project and we were awarded an additional it's approximately twenty four thousand um, dollars and so uh, that official notification um, was received today and they're getting the paperwork lined up for us uh, but we had applied well actually so uh, Dave Roberts uh, with Craft and Toll who is one of the designers on the project alerted uh, us to the uh, the ability to get that grant and within a couple of days Alyssa Anderson who's our grant writer turned around that grant, submitted it, and then about two and a half weeks later, we were notified that we uh, received the funding. So that will go towards a, uh, a 30 by 30 shade structure on the side of the splash pad, which had already been planned for, just didn't have the funds for. So uh, there you go. Well, we, we will be able to uh, expand the park. So I just want to let you all know that. Thank you, Mayor. Any additional council member comments? Madam City Attorney? 
Uh, I do have something tonight. I'm, I'm sorry. I know it's been a long night, but um, I wanted to mention the um, Arkansas legislature is in session. So just wanted to uh, mention everybody to be aware of the bills that are coming up regarding local government. Uh, the Municipal League has some great resources on that. If you have a chance to look at their website. One I wanted to mention is House Bill 1252. Um, that, I believe, is in committee, and it would um, require all uh, city or town elections to be partisan. Um, so if you have feelings about whether you think local officials should have to run in partisan elections, um, please reach out. The, the website has all of the information for those committee members, uh, and you can reach out to them directly and let them know how you feel about that. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Just uh, pointing out that our next meeting will be on a Tuesday as well, uh, February, in honor of President's Day. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, at this time, if there's nothing further, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. I've got a motion and a second. Do I hear any discussion? Are you sure? No. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. We are adjourned.